Good morning or good afternoon if you happen to find yourself on the East Coast. Uh, my name is Javier Bassett, Attorney General here in the state of California. I want to thank all of you for joining. A special thanks to Doug Obiji who's joining us. He's the Senior Attorney at the National Resource Defense Council. I also want to recognize some members of my team at the Department of Justice who really done all the work and deserve the, the credit for where we are today. To Tatiana Power, who is a Deputy Attorney General, Catherine uh, Wien, another D, uh, DAG, uh, Lonnie Mayer, another DAG, Adam Levitin, DAG, Brian, Brian Cannon, DAG, Tara Morrison, who is a Supervising Deputy Attorney General, Eric Katz, a Supervising Deputy Attorney General, and to Arsenio Mataka, who is a Special Assistant to the Attorney General here at the Department of Justice. Thanks to the entire team. Tatiana will be available also for any questions if there, if you decide to go and dive deeply into the, the issue at hand today. So why don't we go ahead and begin? Uh, I will turn it over to Brian after I finish my remarks. I mean, excuse me, Doug, uh, after I finish my remarks. So let me go ahead and, and, and launch and uh, get into it. Uh, we're here today to talk about California's precious waterways. We're here to talk about another thing, but principally we're here to talk about California's precious waterways. From the pristine uh, Pacific Coast in the San Francisco Bay Area to Lake Tahoe to California's waterways throughout the state, they are unsurpassed. But while we know the critical importance of these waterways for drinking water, recreation, wildlife, habitat, and also agriculture, there's something else. The Trump administration wants to clear the deck for fossil fuel infrastructure that would pollute these waters and damage our environment. Today, along with General Bob Ferguson of Washington State, Letitia James of New York State, I am leading a multi-state coalition in filing a lawsuit challenging the Trump administration's attempt to unlawfully curtail our state's congressionally authorized role to protect our waters. In Section 401 of the Clean Water Act, Congress authorized states to independently review the water quality impacts of federally permitted projects that may result in a discharge and that require a federal license or permit to ensure that those projects do not violate state laws. In fact, Congress explicitly granted states authority to condition certification of these projects on compliance with our state water quality standards and quote, any other appropriate requirement of state law, end quote. Crucial uh, provision that I guess the Trump, Trump administration neglected. In doing so, uh, Congress recognized the critical role states play in protecting and enhancing water within our respective borders. Our state's rights under Section 4 of the Clean Water Act are ingrained and have been recognized so by so far and so long as some 30 years by the EPA itself, uh, by numerous administrations from both parties over the years, and both the Supreme Court and Circuit Courts of Appeal. But last month, in its haste to promote the infrastructure under the President's executive order, the EPA arbitrarily rewrote existing law dealing with water quality certification regulations. Those changes severely limit states' ability to review federally permitted projects under the Clean Water Act. These types of federally permitted projects subject the state's review, uh, that are subject to the state's review, often include natural gas and oil pipelines, commercial land development, housing, hydro uh, power plants, wastewater treatment plants, wetland developments, and other types of industrial projects. As you might imagine, these projects bring with them many environmental challenges. One of the only ways to ensure that these projects comply with state law is through the state's authority under Section 401 of the Clean Water Act. The EPA's new rule limits the scope of what states can review and requires states to take action within a limited time frame with minimal information. So let's be clear, this Trump administration rule is not about water quality. This is about pushing forward fossil fuel energy infrastructure. In our lawsuit, we argue that the EPA's drastic state authority under Section 401 is unlawful because it's contrary to the plain language, structure, purpose, and legislative history of the Clean Water Act. Uh, 
It's contrary to binding Supreme Court precedent interpreting Section 401, and it's contrary to the EPA's own guidance on Section 401, which spans decades and multiple administrations. In order to protect the quality of our waters within our borders, we are suing the EPA today, requesting the new rule be vacated, it's the Administrative Procedure Act and the Clean Water Act. We want to keep California's environment the envy of the world and the pride of every Californian. That's why we will be taking the Trump administration to court once again. And when I say once again, I have to make that just in these last two days of this week, we've already had to sue the Trump administration four times. And in the past two weeks, six times. It's, it's not outrageous to say that this become the modus operandi of this administration. Forget about the rule of law, do what they can to change rules, especially in these last six months of this president's administration, to try to undo and dismantle so many of the protections that you and I count on. And so we're ready. We'll stand up wherever we can. So far this week, Monday and Tuesday, we've had to take action four times against this administration in court. But then again, if you realize something, President is acting like that Ponzi scheme operator. He doesn't mind gambling. Uh, and if he loses, he doesn't worry because he's not gambling with his own money. In this case, the president is gambling with taxpayer money in trying to change the law unlawfully. And if he loses, he doesn't care. It's not skin out of his uh, pocket or money out of his pocket. And so we see what we're faced with. And people don't understand why we've had to sue uh, two days, four times this administration, six times in the last two weeks, 23 times since the beginning of 2020, and some 90 times since this president took office. Uh, he may think it's okay to, to try to be above the law. We're going to check that, not on our watch. With that, let me turn it over to Doug so he can say some words. Doug? Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. It's really an honor to be here. And I completely agree that today's lawsuit really is necessary to protect Californians and to protect our environment and to restore the balance between the federal government on the one hand and the states and tribes on the other in how we implement the Clean Water Act and protect our rivers, wetlands, and our environment. You know, the Trump administration's final regulation eviscerates the authority of the states and tribes to impose important conditions on these kind of federal permits. In addition to putting these unreasonable and unlawful limits on the types of conditions that can impose, as the Attorney General mentioned, it really curtails the process for certification, trying to really eliminate the ability of the public to have a say and to limit the ability of states and tribes to be able to get the information they need to impose appropriate conditions. You know, there, there's a wide range of projects that are subject to Section 401. Um, anything from development projects, pipelines, um, things that are regulated by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, as well as permits under the Clean Water Act under Section 404. And in California, we see hundreds of these certifications each year. Most of them are routine, but some of them are critically important and controversial. And it's really essential that the state has the ability to impose these conditions. Um, and I want to drive down, drill down a little bit. You know, I think in California, one of the biggest impacts is going to be with respect to hydroelectric projects. You know, under existing law, Section 401 of the Clean Water Act is the really the only way that the state of California can impose conditions on these 50-year licenses for hydroelectric projects, like the, the proposed license on the Tuolumne River for the New Don Pedro project. You know, the existing license expired several years ago. It has totally inadequate stream flows below the dam, which means that right now, 80 to 90% of the water in that river is diverted. The State Water Board has adopted new protections for the river, but under the Trump administration's 401 regulation, the Tuolumne River would be effectively exempt from the state's regulations. And that means that the state couldn't protect the thousands of fishing jobs that depend on a healthy river, all the recreation and quality of life on the river, and everyone who, who depends on it. And it effectively overturns two Supreme Court decisions that gave the states this authority. I completely agree that the Trump administration's final regulation is unlawful and must be overturned. And I'm proud that the Attorney General is once again standing up for the people of California 
and standing up to the Trump administration's brazenly unlawful assault to weaken California's ability to protect wetlands and rivers under the Clean Water Act. And again, thank you for your leadership. And you know, this is important, not just in California, but across the nation, but it's also really critically important in California. Doug, thank you. And I think now we're ready to take some questions.